Norway will no longer fund Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's kind of a big deal. Let me give you a little background about what's been going on. See, Norway is a state-funded religion. The Norwegian constitution states that all religions must be treated the same. Because Norway has a state-funded religion, all other religions receive funds from the state. They receive money per congregant or, in the witness's case, per publisher. On January 27, 2022, the state administer denied claims for Jehovah's Witnesses to receive state subsidies. On April 7, 2022, the European Association of Jehovah's Witnesses Religious Freedom Subcommittee sent a letter appealing this decision. I'll read the background straight from the state administer. They state, there have been warnings from former members of Jehovah's Witnesses. The notices have, among other things, been about the religious community's exclusionary practice, including the exclusion of minor members. The Ministry of Children and Family Affairs asked the state administer to look more closely at the practice and assess whether there were grounds for refusing grants. Based on what emerged from the statements of Jehovah's Witnesses, we started an investigation on 15-9-2021. They go on for the reason for their decision. The Religious Society Act sets several conditions for being able to receive state support. In our investigations, we uncovered several violations of the Religious Communities Act, such as Persons who voluntarily leave the faith community shall be treated in the same way as excluded members. This means that remaining members, family, and friends will not have contact with the excluded. Then, Preparatory Work for the Religious Communities Act 2 points out that the right to freedom of religion presupposes that withdrawal can take place unconditionally and without obstacles on the part of the religious or philosophical community. By having rules for how the members should relate to excluded members, we found that the religious community prevents withdrawal. We regard the practice as a violation of the Religious Communities Act, too. I don't know what that squiggly thing is. And it goes on. Two, baptized minors may be excluded. It shows how minors are treated the same as adults who are excluded. Then three, minor members may be exposed to social isolation. Just think about it. Anybody under the age of 18 who was born into a religion, they don't know anybody. They don't know anybody from school. They're not supposed to hang out from anybody from school and they usually don't have a job. So their family completely turns away from them. I'm rambling, I'm sorry, I will come on. Oh. It says, we consider the offenses to be systematic and intentional and therefore denied state subsidies for 2021. This is in line with the religious community regulations of 11 third paragraph. Well, it goes on that the witnesses mainly stated that the religious community does not violate the Religious Communities Act 2 and 6 and that the state administer's decision is incorrect. It also stated that the decision violates sections 16 and 101 of the constitutions and articles 9 and 11 of the CH that. Okay, they also state that they do not prevent anyone from opting out and that their exclusionary practice is protected under ECHR Art 9. They also write that children in practice are not excluded and that the state administer has in any case not proved that the exclusion harms the children. Well, the state administer went on to answer. The denomination writes in section 42 of the complaint that members who withdraw from the denomination are respected for their decision, and it's up to each individual who is affiliated with the congregation 
to use their personal religious conscience to decide whether they want to limit or completely avoid contact with that person. But as you see, the state administrator pointed out, the decision of 127.22, the religious community in Organized to Do Jehovah's Will, page 153, writes, on the other hand, that if a Christian person chooses to withdraw, a brief notice is given to the congregation which reads, the person's name is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Such a person is treated in the same way as someone who is excluded. We know that exclusions mean that you should not have contact with or associate with the person in question. The religious community here encourage members to avoid contact with the excluded. The administrator goes on that the allegations that only the members themselves decide who they want to have contact with do not agree with the religious community's own rules. The religious community, in reality, has a ban on contact with excluded members. The consequences of opting out of the religious community may therefore be to lose contact with family and social networks. For the state administer, this scheme appears as a form of sanction imposed on society by those who opt out. We understand that the individual person can decide for themselves how much contact they want to have with people who no longer share the same values as themselves. However, the contact is not something the religious community can sanction without hindering the right to free withdrawal. It then goes on, furthermore, the religious community states that there is no violation of the religious communities act six. In section 86 through 87 of the complaint, the religious community points out that the children who are baptized are mature enough to understand the consequences of being a Jehovah's Witness, including that they are aware that baptism means that you must follow certain rules and that you can be expelled if you break the rules and do not regret it. In addition, we would like to note that Section 6 of the Religious Communities Act is intended to protect all children, even those who are considered by the religious community to be mature enough teenagers. In Section 88 through 89, society states there can be no violation of 6 if the state administer cannot refer to a specific incident where a child has been excluded and has been harmed by this. Furthermore, the religious community points out that today only one person under the age of 18 is excluded. Regardless of how many children are excluded from the religious community today, it is problematic that the religious community has a scheme where it is possible to exclude children. The threat of being ostracized and losing contact with family and friends appears to the state administer to be serious for a child. In section 98, the religious community points out that it is up to the individual to decide whether they want to have contact with the excluded child. To this end, we will show our assessment above, which shows that the religious community has rules that in reality prohibit just such contact. In section 110, the denomination states that unbaptized minor publishers are in no way socially isolated. However, as we pointed out in the resolution of that number, the denomination writes this in Organized to Do Jehovah's Will, pages 154 through 155. If an unbaptized offender does not repent after two elders have met with him and tried to help him, it is necessary to inform the congregation. A brief statement is made that reads, the person's name is no longer recognized as an unbaptized publisher. The congregation will then regard the transgressor as a worldly person, even if he is not excluded. Christians will be careful to associate with him. The congregation will not accept any field service reports from him. They go on to state, we would like to point out that the decision applies to the religious community's requirements for subsidy funds and not whether the religious community 
should be able to operate as a religious community in Norway, nor does it limit how the religious community should be able to practice its religion. The decision also does not include or restrict the religious community's freedom of assembly. The rules in the Religious Communities Act apply to all registered religious communities in Norway. Regarding the allegations, we were also clear that we did not instruct the religious community to answer further questions in this round as the religious community had already commented on several occasions on precisely these inquiries and warnings. The religious community, nevertheless, had the opportunity to express themselves and chose to do so in a letter. After a review of the complaint, the state and minister cannot see that new and significant information has been added to the case. We uphold the decision. Thank you, Norway. Well, now you're caught up on Norway. Actually, other countries are following course. It's happening around the world. I've done a whole video on what I think about disfellowshipping. If you're enjoying this content, please like so that it goes out to other people. And if you really like, follow along for more. Thank you.